Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at the stages of meiosis. Now there are quite a few stages of meiosis. Uh, firstly, interphase, which technically isn't part of meiosis. It's what's happening when meiosis is not happening, so the cell going about its usual business. Uh, we then have prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase 1, which makes up the meiosis 1 process and then we have meiosis 2 which then repeats those stages but we'll go through those in a bit of detail shortly first what is meiosis meiosis is cell division as i mentioned before and it occurs in the sex organs so in humans this is the ovary and the testes and it produces gametes which in humans are the egg and sperm Generally, meiosis results in the production of four non-identical haploid daughter cells. And haploid means that they have half the normal number of chromosomes. So in humans, the diploid number, 2n, that most cells have is 46 chromosomes found in 23 pairs. Uh, the haploid number that is found in the egg and sperm is 23 chromosomes, and there are no pairs there. So in human's case, N would be 23. Now rather than drawing 2N or 46 chromosomes for humans, I'm going to draw two chromosomes. Okay, so in this case, for the example here, we're going to have an N of 1. So we start with 2N, a diploid cell. Now the DNA is uncoiled or uncondensed. So it's all wrapped around like a long piece of spaghetti tangled up and inside the nucleus. Now the reason that it's open and or uncondensed like that is so that various things can get in and read that uh, DNA to create proteins. And cells spend the majority of time in this phase. Uh, the G stands for growth and probably about 90% of time is spent in this interphase which is in between the two stages or the two phases of meiosis. So it would have come from a daughter cell, uh, from a previous, probably mitosis, meiosis, depending on the cell, uh, turned into interphase and sat there for a while. Now we're going to get into meiosis itself. Now before meiosis occurs, we need DNA replication to occur. And this occurs in the interphase, what we call the interphase S stage. Uh, and the reason the DNA replication occurs here is because once the DNA is condensed down into those chromosomes, it's no longer able to be uh, the thing that replicates it, can't get in and unzip and replicate those two strands of DNA. So we now have two identical copies of each of the chromosomes. So we have 4n, uh, here n equals 1, remember in humans n equals 23 chromosomes within the cell. Now the way that I've drawn this is that the red chromosome and the yellow chromosome are homologous chromosomes, being that they are joined together and they code for the same genes. However, they may have different alleles on those genes. So to show here that there are two red and two yellow shows that there are two sets of each of these homologous chromosomes. So when DNA occurs, it replicates exactly the same, which gives us this 4N number. Okay, moving into meiosis proper now. So that DNA condenses into the chromosomes and they join onto their sister chromatid at the centromere. Now the sister chromatid is the one that has just been formed through that DNA replication and is exactly the same as each other. So we see the two reds here are joined at the centromere, uh, which I've denoted by a black circle and the two yellows are joined at the centromere. So each of those are sister chromatids. Now prophase, it, or prophase 1, is where crossing over occurs. And crossing over is very important for genetic variability. And what happens is they swap a little portion of that DNA, do a bit of a dance, get it twisted, and swap some DNA. Uh, now, the, after that happens, uh, the nuclear membrane begins to dissolve. So that by the time we get into metaphase one, the nuclear membrane has been dissolved. Now the tetrads, a tetrad is four of these chromosomes, which now are no longer identical. No, any of them are identical. So these are four homologous chromosomes and they clump together in a tetrad. Uh, but the tetrads line up along the equator and here we've only got our two 
or one tetrad made up of those four chromosomes, uh, but you can imagine that in a human cell there would be 23 of these tetrads all lined up across the equator. During this phase, the centrioles uh, move to the poles and start to produce spindle fibres that extend out and join onto the uh, chromosomes at the centromere. We then have anaphase one, where those spindle fibres pull those chromosomes apart in their pairs uh, to the poles of the cell. Then in anaphase one, the nuclear envelope reforms and cytokinesis begins. Now this is cytokinesis being the cell, actual cell division, again, is not technically a part of meiosis. Uh, meiosis, we're talking about all the things that are happening with the nucleus and with the DNA. Uh, this, the cytokinesis does occur, but not technically part of the whole cycle. Now, we move into prophase two. Remember before I said that there was meiosis one and meiosis two. So prophase two is the first part of meiosis two. Uh, so we start with two diploid daughter cells, and this is from the free previous cell division, and each of these has two N chromosomes. And once again, the nuclear membrane starts to dissolve. The chromatids line up along the equator. The centrioles move to the poles. The spindle fibers connect the, to the centromeres from the centrioles. We then move into anaphase two, where those spindle fibers pull the chromosomes to the poles of the cell. The cell membrane then reforms as cytokinesis begins, resulting in four non-identical haploid daughter cells. So you can see that each one of these daughter cells has in it one chromosome. Remember for this, uh, the N number is one, so one N being one chromosome. You'll also notice that these chromosomes are all different. Uh, there's red, there's yellow, so very similar to the original ones that formed, but there's also one that's got a little bit of red and one that's got a little bit of yellow. Now, this is a very, very simplified version. Uh, chromosomes contain, contain thousands of genes and this crossing over occurs at multiple locations. Uh, so all I'm trying to demonstrate here is that these uh, daughter cells are non-identical. In this video, we've looked at all the different stages of meiosis. We've talked about interphase, not technically meiosis, however, where DNA replication occurs, creating four N chromosomes within the cell. Uh, prophase, where the chromosomes condense. Metaphase, where the Tetrads line up along the equator and the centrioles move to the poles. And a phase where the spindle fibers pull those uh, chromosomes to the poles, splitting them apart. Telophase where the cell nuclear membrane reforms and cytokinesis occurs. We then go into meiosis two, where all those things happen again, starting with that 2N number, ending up with one end at the end of that second cytokinesis after telophase two. Meiosis, two stages of meiosis, meiosis one, um, meiosis two, two cell divisions, only one DNA replication resulting in non-identical haploid daughter cells. Peace out, guys.